In the previous sections, we have talked about all the parts of alimentary canal, starting from mouth, buccal cavity up to the large intestine. Now, there are two main glands which help in the process of digestion, that is liver and pancreas. So first, we want to understand how liver and pancreas are connected to this alimentary canal. Both liver and pancreas, they open into duodenum. So here we are uh, first trying to see how these two ducts pour, uh, sorry, these two glands pour their secretions into the duodenum. So to understand this, we'll make the same diagram. This is the stomach and as we know, it is an obliquely placed structure and it is slightly on the left side. This leads, this stomach leads into the small intestine and the first part of the small intestine that is duodenum is not a bent tube. It is pretty much straight and then this is going to become a uh, joint or uh, the next part would be jejunum and iliac. This is on the left hand side and this is the place where the diaphragm would come. On the right hand side is the largest gland of our body and it is an exocrine gland that we are talking of. That is liver. The liver has two main lobes and two smaller lobes. So here we are drawing the two main lobes. When we take the complete structure of liver, that is when we will talk about the details and the names also. But we are drawing two main lobes. That is the right lobe which looks larger, it is larger and this is the left liver lobe. So let us label this. This is the right lobe of liver and this one is the left lobe of liver. Attached to the liver is a small balloon like structure which is called the gall bladder. So now this liver which is a large gland it is placed on the right hand side just below the diaphragm and this curvature, the upper convex surface of the liver fits into the concave part of the diaphragm. So diaphragm is like this and the liver fits just below it in that curvature. And it is also connected to the inner side of the diaphragm with the help of peritoneum. And this is gallbladder. Let us draw the pancreas. Pancreas is present in this uh, space between stomach and the duodenum part. Let me also label this. This is duodenum and this is stomach. And here is this tubular gland that is pancreas. So this is the location. We have seen the structure of uh, stomach and which all juices are produced here. We also talked about small intestine and all three parts. Now here we are discussing the connection, how liver pours its secretion which is known as bile and pancreas pours its secretion which is known as pancreatic juice into duodenum. From the liver lobes, from the left lobe comes one duct which collects the bile which is produced by the cells which are in the right lobe. Similarly, a duct collects bile from the left lobe. So there are two ducts which are collecting bile, one from the main right lobe, one from the left lobe. These ducts are known as hepatic ducts and depending upon the lobe, we will call them right or left. So this duct will be called the left hepatic duct. And this duct will be called the right hepatic duct. This one is the right hepatic duct. These two ducts join to form a common duct and to this common duct is attached a duct which is coming from the gallbladder. So from gallbladder, 
bladder, a duct comes and joins this. The duct coming from gall bladder is known as this one. This duct is known as cystic duct. So cystic duct is going to bring the secretion from, that is bilobally, which is stored in the gall bladder. And this duct is now formed by joining of the hepatic duct, which is formed by the fusion of right and left hepatic ducts, and a cystic duct. This one is known as common bile duct. And this common bile duct is also known as ductus coleodocus. So bile duct has been given this other name also. So how is this bile duct formed? There are two ducts which are bringing bile from the main lobes of the liver. From the right lobe brings the right hepatic duct. From the left brings a uh, bile is brought by the left hepatic duct. Both of them join to form a common hepatic duct. We have not labeled that but this would be called common hepatic duct. And common hepatic duct and cystic duct, when they join, they form a common bile duct. And that duct is known as ductus coleodocus. Now this is the duct which is formed and it is going to bring the bile which is produced by the liver as well as the one, the bile which is stored in the gall bladder. Now let us come to the duct which is coming from pancreas. Pancreas pours pancreatic juice through a duct and this duct is known as duct of Virsang. This is called duct of Virsang. The common name would be pancreatic duct. But invariably the questions which are asked are on the basis of this. That is duct of Virsang. This is the main pancreatic duct. Now, the common bile duct, this comes here. And before it opens or it joins this pancreatic duct, there is a sphincter. Here there is a sphincter and this sphincter is known as this sphincter is known as sphincter of Boyden and this remains closed when there is no food in the duodenum. So if this remains closed whatever bile is coming from the liver lobes would be diverted into gallbladder so that it can be stored here. And as soon as food comes into the duodenum, the sphincter opens and it pours that complete bile into the duodenal part. And now, uh, I think I'll have to shift this a little bit so that we are able to draw the structure even wider or better. So I'm just shifting this duodenal part slightly outer so that all the tubes are clearly visible. Now what has happened is common bile duct opens into or joins the pancreatic duct and there is a sphincter. This sphincter is called sphincter of Boyd. So now the next duct which is formed that is formed by the fusion of common bile duct and pancreatic duct that is duct of Wilson. We will start calling it hepatopancreatic duct because this is a common duct which is bringing bile from the liver and pancreatic juice from pancreas. Hepatopancreatic duct opens into duodenum but before it opens there is a swollen structure. It swells, it changes into a bulb-like structure. This bulb is known as ampulla of water. This swollen part. And then it opens into this duodenum. 
the opening of hepatopancreatic duct into the duodenum is also guarded by a sphincter and that is known as sphincter of OBDI. Some people call it ODI, some people call it ODI. So named after the scientist, it is known as sphincter of ODI or sphincter of ODI. So this is what is the connection. One more duct we have to draw, but before that, let us go over this. In the liver, there are two main lobes. There are two smaller lobes also. We'll draw that later. Two main lobes. The right lobe is bigger. The left lobe is smaller. The liver is placed just beneath the diaphragm towards the right side. From the right lobe, whatever amount of bile is produced, that is conducted or that is brought by hepatic duct. And we call that hepatic duct right hepatic duct because it is bringing bile from right lobe. Left hepatic duct brings bile from left lobe. These two ducts, they join and they form a common hepatic duct. There is a small balloon-like structure attached to the liver. It is called gallbladder. It stores all that extra bile. From here, the bile is brought by another duct which is called this one. This is cystic duct. Now when cystic duct and the common hepatic duct, they join, we get a common bile duct which is also known as coleodocus. Before the bile duct joins with the pancreatic duct, that is duct of Virsang, there is a sphincter and that sphincter is known as sphincter of Boyden. The purpose is this sphincter will remain closed if there is no food in the duodenum so that whatever bile is being produced can be diverted into gallbladder and can be stored there. As soon as food comes into the duodenum, this sphincter is going to open and all the bile will be poured into the duodenum. From the pancreas, juice would be poured by this main duct that is duct of Wilson. So now bile duct and pancreatic duct, they have joined. The common duct is known as hepatopancreatic duct. Hepato for liver and pancreatic for pancreas. This hepatopancreatic duct, before opening into duodenum, swells into a small bulb-like structure, which is known as ampulla of water. This ampulla of water opens into duodenum. And that opening is again guarded by a sphincter called sphincter of Odi or sphincter of Oda. This is the connection. There is one more duct which directly pours the secretion from pancreas into the duodenum without becoming the part of this connection. So, if we draw that duct, that duct directly comes from the pancreas or if we draw it from here, so this is coming from pancreas and it opens directly into the duodenum. Let me draw it slightly here so that this blue duct which we have drawn, it is coming directly from pancreas and opening directly into duodenum. This is known as duct of Santorini. Again, named after the scientist. So from pancreas, there are two ducts. One is the main, which is called duct of Wilson, which joins with the bile duct to form hepatopancreatic. But there is one very thin duct, which is called duct of Santorini, that pours the pancreatic secretion directly into the duodenum part. So now when we talk of the complete elementary canal, we say, Liver and pancreas, these are two main glands which help in the process of digestion. And here we have seen the connections. That means how liver pours its secretion into the tube, that is elementary canal, and how pancreas pours its secretion. So this connection is very important and the questions which are asked are mainly on the names of the ducts which are pouring various secretions. Now this is the connection part. After this, we will talk about the actual structures and functions of these two main glands.